Good afternoon, folks. I'm back in the soaping playground again. It's been a while. Um, I'm just going to jump right into this. I'm trying out several different soap making methods. Um, uh, I don't know if you've been following my blog, but I've done a review on the most recent soap making book for liquid soapers. And I figured, what the hell, why not? I'm going to put a couple of different methods to the test. I'm going to pull one or two out of that book. Well, I'm going to pull one particular method out of that book. Um, I am modifying one of the methods slightly, uh, but I am also doing one straight up out of the book. Um, I'm also going to do some old school methods. Um, I'm, I'm basically just doing a comparison of all the different methods that I can possibly do. Uh, I've got four crock pots laid out, um, just so you can see really quick. I've got this see right here. Um, this holds about 1.5 quart, or yeah, 1.5 quarts total on um, each one. Um, each burner or each uh, crock has its own uh, three three point setting. Uh, low, medium, warm, or low, high, warm. Anyways, and then I have my old trusty little baby crock pot over here. Well, it's not the baby anymore, but it's got that one. Um, let me see, just plop you right back here. There you go. I'm going to be starting with uh, this particular one first. This is a slightly modified glycerin method. Uh, from what I noticed in the book, uh, she, the author, does uh, she uses a lot of glycerin in in her uh, bleh, I can't think in her recipes um, specifically to achieve achieve the transparency specifically to achieve uh, better stirability increased trace all those wonderful things that goes with glycerin method but she does a modified glycerin method in that it's half water and half glycerin. Um, I am partial to the full glycerin method, which is 100% glycerin. The lye is dissolved in the hot glycerin. Um, that said, uh, I will be doing that, but she also likes to use dual lye, uh, which is basically using a percentage of KOH with NaOH, potassium hydroxide with sodium hydroxide. <sighs> in this, um, I can't remember the exact percentages, but I pulled them straight out of her book and ran them through the Summer Bee Meadow. Was it Summer Bee? No, I did not use the Summer Bee Meadow calc, actually. Um, all of my calculations were done with the Soap Calc app uh, for Android. I don't recall if it has one for iPhone or not, but I do specifically have it for Android. Um, it, 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 its numbers and values definitely come out very similar to SoapCalc.net, the desktop version. Um, this is not made by the same company or, or web designer or what have you. This is a totally different person. But anyways, I'm using a SoapCalc or lie calculator that not too many other people use. It's very accurate. I've, I've cross-checked it with several different ones. And I'm rambling. <laughs> but anyways. That's what I'm using. That's what I'm basing my calculations on. I'm confident in it. It's good to go. Um, in this one, we're going to be doing the dual lye and full glycerin method. There will be no water except for dilution, unless I have an issue uh, dissolving the sodium hydroxide in the glycerin. Um, I think I tried to do this before, a long, long time ago, and the sodium did not want to dissolve. So we'll find out soon enough. Um, I'm also doing alcohol method. I am also doing, let's see, I've got alcohol method. I'm also going to be doing a full paste method over here in the big one. Um, this is going to be for my laundry soap. I'm out of laundry detergent again. Again, it's been a while, but yeah, I'm out of laundry detergent. Um, all of these are all, again, coconut oil soaps. It's very easy to use. Everybody can grab it straight out of the grocery store. It, it's, it's pretty consistent across the board, and I need to clean. And when I'm done with all of this, I'm just going to dump it all in one big pot, 
and make my laundry soap with it. So, you know, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm running different, you know, little trial experiments, plus I get my cleaning supplies. Anyways, so we're starting here with the, uh, the glycerin um, that's heating up. Um, it actually had fully heated earlier, but uh, I needed to turn it down a little bit. Um, I don't think you can notice it, but it's slightly smoking a little bit, which means it's ready. Typically, um, if you were to take out your thermometer to check the temperature, it should be about 200 degrees average in order for the, uh, the lye to dissolve. I'm going to go ahead and turn down my burner. It's on simmer, low, and remember, always do this slowly and carefully because this does, you know, bubble up. to go ahead and pour this, killing this burn. I'm going to work back here on this back one. This one's going to be fairly easy. My oils, everything's melted. I, I prepped everything for beforehand. That burner is off. I'm going to go ahead and shift you closer here. Maybe you can see in it, maybe you can't. Alright, I'm going to leave that there. That's not going anywhere. And if it does, it does. No point in me uh, sitting here constantly beating on it with a stick blender. Mm, those bubbles are very dense in here. So I think that's definitely what this is. Alright, I'm going to cap that. And uh, move on to the next one. Okay. Alrighty. Uh, let's see. Next one I want to do. I guess I'll go ahead and do the alcohol method in front of me. Um, that's going to be, it's going to take a, a bit more to it. So, here we go. Got my water here. And there's my high solution right here. i just go ahead and give this stick blender a little whir so it's clean. Here's 
alcohol method. Check to see if it's homogenous. Looks pretty good. According to Fowler, this is the point where I add my alcohol and I just let it cook. The problem is, is uh, alcohol method gets very bubbly again. Um, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. I'm gonna just do it gently. See how it goes. Excuse me. creep out of the pot. So hooray, I headed off a an incident. I'm very pleased with that. Um, alcohol method is supposed to, again, it's supposed to impart clarity. A, a very crisp clarity, but it also helps you provide uh, do gel soaps. Um, that is in like uh, shower gels and uh, lots of O's and O's. <laughs> uh, there we go. Let me just calm down. Oh, this is hot. There we go. Definitely calm down. It's thicker now. Um, doesn't appear to be separating. Which is good. And just see how that looks. Alright. Now this one you have to keep an eye on. Because uh, the alcohol can cause it to foam up more. actually going to keep an eye on its weight because <clears throat> the alcohol does cook off on this one. So, let's see. Okay, with the lid off, and this is a 61.3 ounces. That's with the crock. Um, there we go. Mental note, 61.3. Watch me forget. All right, next one, that baby. Uh, so, this is the potassium carbonate that I made myself, and I'm so proud. <laughs> Alrighty, this is the last. 
which is the lie. This one is just uh, base, a basic coconut oil with the potassium carbonate. I'm going to go ahead and add it to the lye water and see what it does. Um, the glycerin method one, I'll add at the, with, with the dilution water. And hey, you all get to see along with me how this stuff behaves, right? We all know also that coconut oil soaps, the, the liquid soap anyways, are very difficult to stir after a certain point. I'm crazy volcanoing out of it, so the KOH and the K2CO3 together behave, right? That's cool. Anyways, coconut oil liquid soap is very difficult to stir once it's uh, made its paste stage. That's the other reason why I want to try the K2CO3 potassium carbonate in it. I want to see if it does actually make it easier to stir. And that's the other <coughs> reason why you want to try to potassium carbonate. Uh, apparently it improves stirability of your soap, especially that difficult one. It's like coconut oil. This is uh, potassium carbonate, sodium hydroxide, water, coconut oil, so I'm going to see how this makes it stirable later on. Here, I'll give you a quick close-up of the coconut oil soap real quick. Now, for those of you who have worked with coconut oil soap very frequently, you will know how difficult it is to stir once, you know, it's, it's hit its paste stage. This is like, like fluffy marshmallow. So the potassium carbonate is definitely a benefit. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Hands down, definitely a benefit. I'm definitely using this from now on when I have to make my coconut oil soap. Um, and of course, you can use it for any other recipe that turns into this rock hard paste in your crock pot. And essentially, we just sit there and we let that cook. Now we're going to clean off my spatula and then we're going to move on to the big crock. We're just going to let that cook. This one's done. Oh, at this point, I'm just going to. Oh, 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 oh. I know you probably can't see it. Wait, maybe, can you? Close up. See that beautiful clear soap underneath all this? This is all foam. I kind of figured as much. It's just foam. Oh. It's so thick with foam, I can't get to it. What I could do is uh, add some alcohol spritz it on the top of the alcohol to break that foam up and then it'll clear up but I'm just gonna leave that alone for now but that's what glycerin method does for you it just makes this beautiful clear soap that's just it's gorgeous gorgeous soap 
of course, as you saw earlier, just all the little tiny bubbles were floating around everywhere. So you definitely get an extra benefit out of, out of glycer method as well. Well now, sorry. Um, I had a nice little uh, camera mount, and I left it in the car. And my husband took my car today. So, eh, it's whatever. Now this crock pot does not have a warm setting, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn it off before I get started. And let's see, let me make sure I have my whisk handy. It's right here, on the edge of the sink, where it needs to be. Here we go. Well, this is just a uh, plain old coconut oil and water and potassium hydroxide. So here we go. Keep an eye on my other three, which seem to be behaving much better than this mess. And I'll be right back. Okay. I'll oh, just real quick. Phew. That happens every time. Every time. Without fail. I think my crock pot runs hot. Hotter than normal. But anyways, um, this is it. As you can see, this is uh, rock hard. That is coconut oil soap for you. Like, pick up a piece, rock hard. Um, so that's just, you know, regular old coconut oil soap, water, KOH, coconut oil. Um, we're going to come back over here. Take a look at our little lovelies. Here is the alcohol method soap. Uh... Still a nice Vaseline-y thing going for it. Looks pretty cool. Well, even thinner than Vaseline. Um, but whatever, it, it's a lovely consistency. Um, again, we're just gonna let this cook. Cook, cook, cook. Um, the alcohol is going to cook out of it. Um, that's just a big given. Not all of it, though, but some of it will. Uh, eventually, I'd add more or I'd add water. However I want to do it. That's what uh, the alcohol method looks like. And I'm sorry, I don't have this sitting on a, a stand or anything. But there we go. Just so you can see it. Alcohol method. Glycerin method with the big layer of foam on top. 
trying to turn this. Ugh, that's just so much foam on it. But, you know, as, as I pull it back, you can see underneath the clear. Yeah, that's glycerin method. It's glycerin method, uh, glycerin method, uh, dual eye. Dual eye glycerin method. And eventually I will add the KOH to it. Not KOH. Oh my lord. The potassium carbonate to it. Ooh, what was that? And then here is the just straight up potassium carbonate. Um, it's losing water. It's a little bit easier to stir still. It's still kind of marshmallowy. So I did that's definitely compared to um, the ones in the larger crop. This is definitely easier to stir. So there's a benefit to using the potassium carbonate if you just need a, a plain coconut oil soap, or if you have a, a recipe that's very high in coconut oil. So um, essentially, we're just gonna let these cook their normal time, two to three hours. We're gonna do two hours because some of them need less time. Come back in two hours, check them all and see how it goes all right okay no, back. we're back again um it's actually been more than two or three hours it's uh 8 14 i finished up around 4 45 it's been oh yeah it's a little bit more than three hours uh three and a half hours i'm gonna go ahead and do clarity tests on all of these they should be done um, let's start with the alcohol, method one.
But um, that's it. Um, I'm gonna do these tonight. See how they behave, and we will come back for the you know, the, the final wrap up. All right. See you guys in a bit. Good afternoon, folks. We're back. Um, everything's all diluted. We're done. Just want to go over what we've got going on here. Um, as you remember, here is our dual lie glycerin method. Um, co everything's uh, coconut oil soap, but here's our dual lie glycerin method. Uh, you see the viscosity here. Um, it kind of does have a little bit more body to it, I think. Not as much as I'd expected with the extra, with the uh, sodium hydroxide used in it. Uh, I think maybe a, a slightly uh, different ratio than uh, what was used in the new liquid soap making book would would work well with this. Uh, this was diluted with uh, four ounces of water. Um, as you see in all of these, these are all little eight ounce oil batches, and I only used uh, four ounces of water, so essentially half the weight in oil for the water dilution. Um, I could also have possibly used a little bit less water. Um, I didn't want to fiddle with it too much. It leaves a very, very light trace. As you can see, it is perfectly clear top to bottom. Let me see if I can prop this up here. So this is going to get turned around. There we go. Alright, now I know you guys are in a different view than I am right now. So we're still here with the glycerin method. That one, I need my other hand. So we have this. This one is the alcoholic method. As you see, uh, it's very cloppy. Bloop. <laughs> uh, this was essentially just the potassium hydroxide, alcohol, water, eight ounces of coconut oil. It's not perfectly clear. This is not um, a method to make transparent soap. This is more like a translucent. If you want more transparency, you would use glycerin or a sugar water solution. <laughs> Another thing I've noticed is that um, the alcohol does slowly evaporate out of the pot if it's not completely sealed, so you'll have little hard chunks along the edge of it. Got a lot of noise going on in the background. House full of little girls. It's awesome. Um, it smells horrid because I used isopropyl alcohol. <laughs> so this is nothing but cleaning soap right here. Um, this would definitely be great in... Uh, uh, definitely a pump bottle because of its viscosity. It's not thick. It's just, it's very viscous. It's, it's a gel. So... Um, you see, as I move it around in there, it just, do, it flows, so it has flow, but it's just very, it's, I, I can't describe this, this is really cool, I'm fascinated by this, um, so we're going to move on to the next one, because I'll sit there and play with this forever. <laughs> Uh, there we go. Oh, this thing's heavy. Here is the just uh, coconut oil and ah, brain fart. Coconut oil, water, potassium carbonate, and the lye. Um, I also forgot to mention that the glycerin method, glycerin method also had the potassium carbonate in it, and I don't notice a difference. 
as far as dilution is concerned. Uh, glycerin method for me was always very easy to dilute anyway. Um, so long as you kept it hot, you just added your hot water to it. And you just let the entire batch just soak it up. Minimal stirring to get everything incorporated and just left it alone. So I really didn't see an added benefit for the potassium carbonate for the glycerin method. Here, the potassium carbonate was used, and if you remember the previous part of, the, of this video, uh, the potassium carbonate made a very fluffy, marshmallowy type deal. Um, as you can see, it's like almost black in this pot. This is completely clear see-through. I also over-diluted, and this is what I get for using any type of ratio with this. Uh, this was diluted with approximately 11 ounces of water, so a little bit more than equal dilution water to oil weight. 8 ounces of oil, 11 ounces of water, and I essentially get water for soap. Uh, the alcohol method was diluted with just a mere 2 ounces of water. If that says anything about this particular method, much less water than the glycerin method, but at the same time, as I said, I could have probably used less anyway to get more of a viscous soap. I definitely overdid it with this one here. And I could go back and cook it off if I want to. I'm not going to. I have plans to make um, some laundry detergent anyway, so it really is not going to matter on this accord. It was a lot easier to dilute with the potassium carbonate addition too. It did dilute a lot faster. Not nearly as fast as my glycerin method or nearly as fast as my alcohol method, but it was definitely a lot easier considering coconut oil soap for, you know, making liquid soap is a pain in the arse to dilute. It was definitely helpful. And then over here in my big crock pot, I'm gonna move you again. You're gonna get flipped around. We have this. Uh, again, watery. I overdid it with the dilution with, on this as well. This was diluted with 25 ounces of water. This was a 16 ounce oil batch and I did uh, about one and a half times water to oil roughly. So that being said, uh, following the really the, the dilution ratios people like to use just doesn't work out for me. I take it slow. I will do 48 ounces of water added to the batch at a time, depending on the size of the batch. Like the glycerin method and alcohol method, I would have done two to four ounces at a time because of how small they are. For your completely water-based soaps, do four to eight ounces at a time. If you're doing as small of a batch, such as, you know, eight ounces in the small crock, 16 in this one. So if I were to do my uh, eight ounce oil again, if I were to do it the way I normally do, I would start out with just four ounces at a time and then go up from there. Um, That's about it. That's that's really the difference between all of them. Um, questions, comments? Um, I might try some other different methods or play around with it a little bit. I mean, there's many different things you can do with these different methods. Glycerin, alcohol, uh, the quasi no paste, the complete paste. I mean, you can put these together and make your own different combination of a method like I did here with the glycerin method where I completely did 100% glycerin and a dual lye method at the same time, which as I indicated earlier, dual lye is the potassium and the sodium hydroxide together. And then I paired it with my glycerin method. Um, I didn't get the result I wanted, but that could also be because I used too much dilution water. I can correct that later if I want to by evaporating some of it out. Um, then the complete 100% alcohol method, that's, I'm still baffled by that one. That one's pretty cool. And, you know, this and this, um, like I said, there, there are tons of different methods out there. Find what you like and play with it.
I just figured I'd go ahead and demonstrate what some of them look like and maybe you can get an idea of what you'd like the best. Um, I hope this was helpful to any of you. And stay tuned, I do have a possible new video coming up later on. I don't know. If not, I don't. But anyways. Um, oh, and for the record, in case anybody asks, I got this crock pot from Walmart. It was 30 bucks. It's pretty cool. Holds a total of uh, each chamber 1.5 ounces or 1.5 quarts. So I might have mentioned that earlier. I can't remember. Anyways, uh, you guys take care.